Good morning. It's wonderful to begin again a new chapter in the book of Revelation. Today we will see chapter 8, the whole chapter, and some of chapter 9 if we finish on time. We have a lot to talk about today, so I'm going to quickly pray and then we will begin our study. Thank you for coming today. I hope it will be a blessing for you. I hope that God's Word will touch our hearts and uh, draw us closer to Him. We serve an incredible God. And I hope you will see that today in the chapters that we will study today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We're thankful for your love for us. We thank you that you reached out through your Son, Jesus Christ, to come here to the earth to die for sinners like us. I'm thankful for your mercy, for your grace. I'm thankful that today you have provided a way of escape for us from the judgments we will see here. We pray you would help us to be faithful to tell as many people as we can about Jesus Christ before we die or the rapture. Help us to use our lives to serve you, to tell as many people as possible about Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I want you to see here a, a short chart about this seven-year tribulation time. You will notice, you will see the seals, the seven seals here, and then the seven trumpet judgments. That's what we will begin to talk about today. We will talk about the first five of those trumpet trumpet judgments. All right? And then the bowl, bowl or the vials, they're called in other places, judgments. So there's three series of seven of these judgments. But I want to begin with you today. Open your Bible to Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. As I said in the beginning, we're going to talk about this whole chapter, all 13 verses, and then the first 12 verses of chapter 9. That will take us through the first five trumpet judgments. All right? So Revelation chapter 8, I want want you to notice what happens when these uh, judgments begin. By the way, let me let you know, these seven trumpet judgments do not follow the seven seals. These seven trumpet judgments are the seventh seal. They are the same. Um, and then following that, we will see in Revelation chapter 16, the bowl judgments that will come as well. But I want you to see verse 1. It says this, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. That really touches my heart because we see that when this last seal is open and it shows the seven trumpet judgments that all of the the angels and the people who were in heaven became silent i want you to see the this great tribulation time the seven year time it it is a series of three different judgments the first seven the first seven were the seven seals. The second are the seven trumpets. And the third are the seven bowl, bowls or vials, they're called. Um, but when this seventh seal is open, showing the seven trumpets, look what happens. There is silence in heaven for about 30 minutes. Uh, all of the angels, all of those 24 elders, 
all of that multitude of people who are there all stop and heaven is on hold. The people there are not talking. They're not singing. We're not hearing, we're, we're not hearing holy, 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 nothing. It's quiet for 30 minutes. Uh, before the seven, the seven angel blows their trumpets. I want you to see what happens. Look at verse 2. He says, And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Now, so now we see the picture there in heaven. There are seven angels. They have seven trumpets. Trumpets with them. Trumpets they have. And they're standing there in front of God. Now, look at verse, by the way, I will tell you right now, we, I'm going to be putting up here many, many verses today. So you have to watch fast, all right? We're going to read right through these, these chapters here. This is the story that we want. And really, it's pretty clear. Uh, there's not a lot of guessing here. God shows us clearly what he's talking about. Verse 3, it says, And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the, gold, the golden altar which was before the throne. So another, not one of the seven angels, a, a different angel stands and he has a Sensor. It's like a basket. Inside it is incense. Uh, it represents the prayers of Christians. Drop down to verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. The, this incense represents God's answer or, or the prayers of Christians, but it, repre it represents God's answer to those prayers. The incense and the fire from the altar represent the prayer of those believers who are being saved now during the tribulation time. Remember last week we talked about the 144,000 Jewish witnesses that would spread around the earth. There will be people, people that are saved. Remember last week from, from every kindred, every tongue, every tribe, every nation, there will be people who will be saved during this time. Those people's prayers are what we're talking about here. When the angel casts fire from the altar onto the earth, John heard voices. Do you see it? He heard voices. He heard thunderings. He, he saw lightnings and he saw earthquakes that happened. And now we are ready. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to to sound. So they are ready. We are ready to begin to see these seven trumpet judgments. The first trumpet judgment is in verse 7. And it says, The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees was burnt up. And all the green grass was burnt up. So we see this first uh, judgment, the first trumpet judgment we see. Really, it changes the natural function of this earth immediately. Quickly, we see this happen. Um, the land is affected. Uh, salt water and fresh water and uh, heavenly bodies all are influenced. One third of the earth's uh, things that grow on the earth, one third is destroyed. 
we can see that. By the way, I want you to see these trumpet judgments we are going to be looking at now, to, uh, this week and next week. They really copy many of the ten plagues of Egypt, the ten plagues that God on Egypt back in the book of Exodus. They copy. They're similar. We'll see that through our, through our, our study today. So this first judgment is similar to the, the plague in Egypt that we see in Exodus chapter 9, verses 23 through 25. There in that chapter, you can, you can read it later, but Exodus chapter 9, verse 23 through 25, we saw thunder and hail. We saw fire run around the ground. We saw hail raining down and fire mixed in with it. We saw all the herbs of the field gone and we saw trees destroyed. Same as this verse here, uh, verse 7 here. But these judgments in Revelation may come, if you think about it, how will they happen? Well, it could be natural things like... Uh, Lightning strikes the ground and burns the ground. It could be, it could be that. Uh, it could be a hail storm coming down. Um, recently here we had hail storm, and really it destroyed many, many cars, really uh, siding on the houses, different things. It was, it was hard. Maybe that's what will happen. Or it could be some nuclear warfare. We talked about that two weeks ago, I think. Could be that again. Uh, remember that John had no idea about uh, nuclear things that we know today. We see it a lot today, today, but John did not know about that, and possibly that's what will cause, will make this happen. We don't know for sure, but whatever the reason or how it happens, we know that Things growing here on the earth are going to be destroyed with this judgment, this first trumpet. Let's go to the second trumpet, second trumpet, verses 8 and 9. And it says in verse 8, And the second angel sounded, as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. When you see this happen here, the second trumpet, it reminds me of, again, going back to the book of Exodus chapter 7, verses 20 and 21, talked about how Moses touched the water with his, his rod and the waters became blood. Same idea here. Uh, when John saw this burning mountain, that's that's how John described the picture, a burning mountain. Now, again, it could be that John was seeing a flaming meteorite. Now, John, John had never seen that before, but we have seen pictures of that. We have seen evidence here when a meteorite, let me spell that again, meteorite, right has hit the earth here we've seen it's burning and it's huge and possibly that's what john is seeing again possibly it is a nuclear missile that's been shot and he sees it hitting the earth but it destroys one one third of the sea possibly this is warfare of ships in in the ocean and they're shooting back and forth and this is what John is seeing. What, whatever it is, again, it's horrible. Uh, and it says in verse 9, The third part of the creatures that were in the sea and had life died. One third of the, the fish and the things in the sea, they die right here. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. So destruction of one-third of sea life, the fish and different things that live there, 
and one third of the ships that were in the sea at that time, as well as uh, one third of the sea becoming blood, it's going to be horrible. This second trumpet will be horrible. And I want you to see, um, it's important for us to understand. Again, there is time today for you and I to tell people, to warn people, to trust Jesus Christ today. We can. I hope you'll do that. All right, moving on. Uh, verse 10, we see the third trumpet judgment. So finish first and second trumpet judgments now to the third trumpet judgment. I want you to see verse 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. So the star is seen falling down, and it hits, and what does it affect? One third of the rivers and and uh, upon the fountains, or maybe we would think today about well water or sp springs from underneath the earth that give uh, give us fresh water. One third of the fresh water and the water in the the rivers is going to be affected. Go down to verse eleven. It says, and the name of the star is called, and we see its name, Wormwood. I'll explain that in a little bit. And a third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. It's interesting. You see the name of the star, Wormwood, that is a, a word that appears in the Old Testament. And I'll give you three places that you can find it later. Again, we don't have time to search for each one. But let me give you, you will see the word wormwood, and you'll understand what it means when you see it. The word itself talks about a bitter herb. Um, and it was used to really to show bitterness and sorrow. So this word worm would, uh, the Jews who were reading this would understand clear what it's talking about. It's a bitter herb. Uh, and in every time it's used in the Old Testament, it's talking about sorrow. Uh, you can find it in Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 15. I, I'll give you these twice. There are three. First one is Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 15. Second is Lamentations. Both were written, both of these were written by Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 15. Again, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 15. And the third one, again, is a prophet, Amos chapter 5, verse 7. Amos chapter 5, verse 7. This bitter sorrow that's coming, the prophets had seen in the past. And John says this star that's coming down and is going to hit uh, in the waters is a bitter star. It will cause one-third of the people on the earth uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It will cause one third of the water on the earth to become bitter and many people will die. Uh, you know, here in America, we don't think a lot about uh, clean water. We're, we're, we're really blessed here. We have good water here. We have uh, ways that bring the water to us that are safe most of the time. But I have noticed more and more people are using bottled water. I remember the first time I saw a person selling water in the store, I thought to myself, water is free. Why would you pay for water? But now everywhere you go, you, you see people with, with uh, bottles of water. 
when this happens here and this star hits the water and changes it to become bitter people will drink the water and will many will die it says from that water is very very important to us and uh it, it we will see the one third of the water affected. Move on to the fourth trumpet. We want to see verse twelve. It says in Revelation chapter eight verse twelve, and the fourth angel sounded, and a third part of the sun was smitten, and a third part of the moon, and a third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, the day shone not for a third part of it, and the, the night likewise. Now, I want you to see, again, we're comparing with the Egypt plagues. You can go back to Exodus chapter 10. If you, re if you read verses 21 through 23, you will see darkness covered Egypt. And by the way, this judgment here with darkness covering one third of everything, a, th a third of the sun, stars, and moon, it affected the day and the night. You'll, no you'll notice it says that the, the sun did not shine during the day and the moon at night, the same. Um, darkness again. Today here, I'm filming beautiful sunshine, beautiful. Makes my heart. When we have rain, rain, rain for one day, two days, one week, two weeks, I become discouraged. I look out, it's dark. It's going to be the same here. Uh, this will affect the light on the earth. Now, this will be changed when we see a, the fourth bowl, bowl judgment that's coming in chapter 16, verses 8 and 9, because then the sun will burn up. It will... So this, will, this judgment will change. But drop down and look at verse 13. John writes, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, I want you to see three times, Woe! Woe! Whoa. To who? To the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet and the three angels which are yet to sound. Uh, John, John hears this angel saying, Oh, it's horrible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who, why? To the people here still alive on the earth during this seven year time. Now, remember, many have already died, but there are still some on the earth. And the angel says, whoa, why? Because it will become worse. The next three trumpets will be worse. This is a warning. It's a warning to the people who are still on the earth, have not received 666, 666 yet. We'll talk about that later. Remember those 144,000 Jews are going around and they're witnessing and testifying, trying to convince people to become saved. This woe is really a warning to the people who not yet saved, but could be saved still. That finishes the fourth trumpet. We go to number five, the, five, the fifth trumpet judgment. And this will be the last one that we'll study today. We'll, we'll finish 6 and 7 next, next week. But I want you to see this fifth judgment. We're going to cover verse, in chapter 9 now. We're going to move to chapter 9. And we will see verses 1 through 12. We're going to have to go fast, so hold on, all right? It says in verse 1, chapter 9, verse 1, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall, fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So this star that's talked about here in verse 1, 
really he's describing Satan himself. You say, Satan himself, a star? If, if you remember, the original name given to the devil was not the devil. It was Lucifer. You remember? Lucifer. I've seen it signed Lucifer because the devil, Lucifer. That name, Lucifer, means the shining one. Remember, God made Lucifer good. But Lucifer decided, chose his own way of pride and fell from God's grace. Took with him one third of the angels. Uh, those, we, we call them fallen angels. They became known also with the name demons. We're going to talk about them some because they're involved here. So that angel, that star that fell from heaven, that had the key to the bottomless pit. Let me show you. Drop down to verse 11, chapter 9, verse 11, and we will see it says about that star that, uh, that has the key. It says in verse 11 that he is the king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. So we believe, and by the way, uh, there is a Greek word that's used here that I want to explain. And it's used, we translate it to the term bottomless pit. We translate, and it's the Greek word A-B-Y-S-S, -S, abyss. And it means darkness. Abyss the the without bottom pit the bottomless pit is dark darkness if you remember if you go back again you have to look it up yourself in luke chapter 8 verse 31 jesus cast out demons from a man those demons begged jesus christ and they said uh, they asked Jesus not, not to send them to go out into the deep. They were talking about this pit without bottom, the darkness. Uh, and by the way, it's the same word in, in Luke chapter 8, verse 31. It's the same word, Greek word, abyss, that is used here for bottomless pit. Fallen fallen angels and de or or demons that's where they are kept there they're blocked in the abyss in the darkness because it says i want to put up another verse for you here in jude verse 6 jude verse 6 it says this and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under the darkness unto the judgment of that great day. Jude verse 6 speaks about this uh, pit without bottom, the abyss. That's what he's talking about. Uh, this uh, abyss is a prison. It is a prison for the fallen angels and the demons. And ever since Adam and Eve sinned, it becomes a place where sinners without Christ will stay. It's sad. It's not a beautiful place, not a nice place. It's not a place where any person would want to go. It is a prison for demons the devil and sinners without Christ. Now, by the way, there's no escape from that prison. No, there's no way out unless, unless God allows it to happen. We will see later the Antichrist, the Antichrist will be thrown in. He will be allowed to leave for a short time. We'll talk about it later. 
but God will put him back there again. I want you to drop down to verse uh, chapter 9, Revelation chapter 9, 9, verse 2. It says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. When this pit, the bottomless pit, was opened, open the door and smoke came out of the pit. Once in a while, my neighbor, he burns uh, wet leaves and it, it doesn't burn with fire. It makes smoke and it just comes up and it, it fills all around my house and it stinks. Sometimes we have our clothing out on the line, you know, hanging on the line. I tell my wife, quick, go get the clothing and bring it in. I don't want it to stink like that. And that's only leaves. The smoke from this pit will smell horrible. And it will be black. It will be so black, it will make the sun dark. It says that. Uh, Jesus talked about the furnace of hell in Matthew chapter 13, verse 42 and 50. Matthew chapter 13, verse 42 and 50, Jesus described hell as a furnace of fire. So we know what we're talking about here in chapter 9, verse 2. It's talking about that. Now, I want you to see what happens because out of that pit comes something horrible. Drop down to verse 3. And it says, And there came out of the smoke locusts, upon the earth and unto them the locusts were given power as scorpions of the earth have power well now this is interesting from that smoke we see lo locusts but they have they have tails like a scorpion they 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 sting they don't kill a person, but it hurts bad. Now, if, if you go back again to the book of Exodus, you will see that God used lo locusts in Egypt also to judge the people back there. Same idea. The, this smoke will be demons that come from hell, and they will be like, scorpions. Go down to verse 4 and verse 5. It says in verse 4, and it was commanded them that they sh they should should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Remember, the people who are saved will have the seal of God it will be seen on their foreheads. I don't know how, but it will happen. We've already seen that with the 144,000 Jewish witnesses that are going out. They will have a seal on their forehead. So it says that the uh, locusts will hurt every person without the seal of God on their forehead. So Christians who are saved during the tribulation seven-year time will be safe from this. Go on to verse 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should torment them five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. They're given the power to hurt people for five months. Now you think, oh, five months, short time. Not if something stings you every day for five months. It's not fun. It's not going to be nice. not going to be easy. But it's what's going to happen. 
Uh, this also compares to the plagues in Egypt in Exodus chapter 8, verses 20 through 23. It talked about uh, swarms or big groups of flies. Second, uh, in, in Exodus chapter 9, verse 26, it talks about hail did not touch the Jews. That happens as well. And then third, third, it talks about uh, deep darkness in Exodus chapter 10, verse 22. So again, we're seeing a copying of the plagues that hit Egypt. The same will be happening in these judgments. This fifth trumpet judgment, it's not nice. Remember, we saw at the end of the fourth trumpet, the angel saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why? Because the next three will be worse. This, this fifth trumpet judgment is worse than the first four. The, the first four were bad, but these next three, they're going to be worse. This fifth trumpet judgment is bad. Now, we need to read a few verses, so I'm going to put them here. Chapter 9, I want you to see verse 7. It says, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared for battle. On their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. Their faces were like faces of men. That's a strange picture. But God said these demons who will be like locusts will have a gold crown. Well, it will look like a gold crown. They will have faces like men. This is strange. Go down verse 8. They had hair like the hair of women. Their teeth were like the teeth of lions. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a scary picture. If I was a little boy and I was thinking about this, I would have bad dreams at night. Go down to verse 9. They had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots and many, many horses running to battle. So get this picture. Verse 7 says that they have a golden crown. They have the face of a man. Uh, verse 8 says that they have hair, long hair, like a woman. But they also have teeth like a lion. Uh, they have breastplates of iron. They look strong. And they will make a noise like chariot, chariots with many, many horses running. If you've ever heard that, you don't just hear you don't just hear it, you can feel it. When the horses are running around you, you can feel it feels like the earth is moving. That's what's going to happen. Go down to verse 10. They had tails like unto scorpions. You know, have you seen the pictures of a scorpion? I have never seen one myself, but I've seen pictures. And it comes up, it comes up around on the end is this is the stinger part part of it. It says they will have uh, tails like that. And their their stings stings will be in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. Now remember, they're not going to kill men, but they will hurt for five months. They're going, to, they're going to sting and sting and boom, 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 every day for five months. These are pictures of what the demons will be doing in this part of the Great Tribulation. It's not going to be fun. Pause for just a minute. Do you remember the rider on the first white horse? way back. Do you remember him? He was going to bring peace, right? Now in chapter 9, it doesn't look like peace. You see, the devil will lie. By the way, the devil is lying today. He is the father of liars. 
We cannot trust what we see in the world today. We must trust here. This is true. Every other thing is false. Okay, back. go back to verse 11, chapter 9, verse 11. It says, and they who, these locusts, they have a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. It's interesting, the king of this pit has two names. They're interesting. They're important. First name, Abaddon, it means destruction. Destruction. He's going to destroy things. His name in the Greek, Apollyon, means the same. It means destroyer. So these names of this king who's over the locusts or the demons here in chapter 9 in this fifth trumpet, the king who is over them, controls them, is a destroyer. Now, I am going to put up another verse because Jesus warned us. He said this in John 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for what? Why does the thief come? He says here, for to steal and to kill and to what? Destroy. The devil does not want to help people. The devil wants to destroy people. He wants that today. He wanted it with Eve when he tempted her in the garden. And ever since, the devil's been trying to destroy people. That's why the devil did not want Jesus Christ to die on the cross. Why? Because the devil knew if Jesus dies for us, uh, the devil cannot hold him in the grave, that Jesus would rise again. The devil has been trying to destroy people ever since Adam and Eve, and he will here in this tribulation time, he will, make, he will put pressure on people to destroy their lives. This shows us that Satan's goal is, especially during this seven-year time, he knows his time is going, and he will intensify his efforts to destroy people. I want you to see one last verse, verse 12, chapter 9, verse 12. He says, One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Do you remember in the, the fourth trumpet at the end, he said, woe, woe, woe. That's the first woe. We have seen the fifth trumpet is the first. Sixth and seventh will be woe, woe, more. Hard to believe it could be more. It could be worse, but it will. It's tough to see these things. Because we, I have a heart of mercy for people. During this time, mercy will be hard to find. God will provide the witness of the 100, 144,000 Jews. But it's going to be a tough time here. We need to increase our effort to try to witness and tell people about Jesus today. I need to close. Our time is gone. But I want to encourage you, don't only study this book of Revelation. No, let it touch your heart and give you a, des a, a motivation and a desire to go and tell more people about Jesus. It's important. Today we have grace. We have freedom. Let's go and tell today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time. Help us to understand the seriousness of these judgments. Help us to be affected by your word today and help us to go and tell some person about Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for watching. We will see you next week.